and welcome to the last targets and focus of the trading week. I'm Thomas Taplin and today we're examining the US dollar without non-farm payrolls data. That's right, it was cancelled after a partial US government shutdown was initiated earlier this week. That said, we've still got an expert on the programme to discuss the latest concerning the dollar CAD, euro dollar and dollar yen. Well, I'm joined on the line from New York by Kathleen Lean, who is the Managing Director of FX Strategy at BK Asset Management. Kathy, thanks for joining me today. First of all, what's the atmosphere like over there in New York on the last day of the trading week? Is this shutdown now starting to work the markets up a bit? I mean, there's no NFP today. I think in terms of the general sentiment in the markets, you're still seeing a lot of nervousness about whether or not the shutdown is going to lead to a default in the U.S. Now, I'm um, I'm I'm a big believer that the U.S. government is not going to allow um, allow any missed interest payments to occur, let alone a default. Um, and I think that you know, given the rather rather tempered decline in the U.S. dollar overall, um, I think you know there's a large part of the market that kind of shares my views. So while there is nervousness, we're not seeing a tremendous amount of panic in the market. Okay, let's look at the dollar against the yen to start with then. We've seen yet more weakening here off the back of governmental issues in the U.S., as I mentioned. Uh, what are your projections in the near, mid and long term for this pair? You're right. We have seen a little weakness, but um, the weakness today has been relatively modest. It's you know less than a tenth of a basis point so far. Um, and if you take a look at the past couple of days, it's um, it's been a rather gradual decline. So I think that you know this once again um, re reflects the market's hope that. Congress is going to reach a deal um, sometime next week, at latest, um, you know, by October 17th. So my projections in dollar yen, the U.S. dollar in general, um, is for some near-term dollar weakness. Sorry, dollar strength over the next um, month, because when the U.S. government um, finally announces that they've reached an agreement on the spending bill, and they've agreed to raise the debt ceiling, which they have to, um, you know, by the end of the month at the latest, that we're going to see a relief rally in the U.S. dollar. So my projections for dollar yet take that into consideration. On a one-month period, I do expect the dollar um, to be trading higher against the yen at around 98. Over a three-month period, um, I expect further um, gains to occur because the Federal Reserve is still on its general course to um, taper asset purchases. It may not happen this year. It could still happen this year, depending upon how um, the labor market numbers fare. But either way, they're moving in that direction. And you know, at the latest, they're going to taper by March. And that's a very, a very different stance from many other central banks. So I think that, um, that uh, you're still going to see interest rates um, in the U.S., um, or rates in the U.S. continue to move higher, and that's going to support a further rally in the U.S. dollar, whereas the Bank of Japan um, stands to potentially um, uh, have to increase stimulus in April um, if if uh, the consumption tax uh, is uh, released without any sort of support, like a um, corporate tax reduction or so forth. So I think that the general trajectory of dollar-yen is still headed higher. So on a three-month basis, I expect dollar-yen to be trading at least 99, and then over um, a year, about 102. Now, against the Canadian dollar, we've also seen quite a sell-off. What's the main difference between the sell-off this year and the similar one around the same time last year? Well, um, first and foremost, you know, we have seen a sell-off in the uh, Canadian dollar if you take a look at it from um, a multi a multi-month perspective. You know, if you take a look at it for the past month itself, um, uh, there there hasn't been too much movement in the pair. It's kind of almost frozen. And you know, the the difference here is, you know, first we actually had a rally um, in the Canadian dollar versus the U.S. dollar, pretty much um, between September to the present. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make is that the Canadian dollar is trying to claw its way back higher. And um, the reason why um, it's been it's um, it's kind of you know 
doing so is because we have been seeing a little bit of improvements in Canadian data. You know, oil prices itself, you know, they've been very volatile as of late, um, but, you know, in general, they remain at relatively lofty levels. If you take a look at where oil prices are now compared to where they were um, in 2012 of this year, at that time, oil prices were around $93 a barrel. Right now, we're about $104 a barrel. So oil prices are much more supportive. So I actually think that, once again, the Canadian dollar is probably going to claw its way back higher. But um, in the near term, it may have a little bit of difficulty doing so. And the reason for that um, is because of you know, the prospect of a relief rally in the U.S. dollar. Finally, let's take a look at the euro against the dollar. We're, of course, seeing big lows here, too, like the other crosses. But with the euro, it's the weakest the U.S. dollar has been for over eight months. Do you project further lows for this pair over a one, three, and 12-month period? Um, not If you're talking about lows against, uh, for the U.S. dollar against the euro, um, then I don't necessarily expect the U.S. dollar to weaken much more against the euro. Um, I actually think that uh, we're probably going to see some dollar strength against the euro, not just in the near term, but also in the longer term. Um, in the near term, you know, it's the same story with a relief rally in the U.S. dollar. Um, in the longer term, um, the eurozone data is still lagging U.S. data, and the same um, is true for eurozone monetary policy. So while growth is firming, um, and, you know, there's little signs of firming um, in the eurozone, a lot of the um, strength that we're seeing is actually not in Germany, but in some of the um, other countries. And we really need, um, you know, the, the largest economy to to accelerate in terms of growth for for the currency to really um, to rise. And the fact that the ECB is floating the idea of um, another rate cut or um, another LTRO program, I think, is their way of telling us that they want to keep the currency weak. So as a result, you know, I think that you know we're probably going to see a limited um, rally in the euro against the U.S. dollar from here on forward and actually um, probably a uh, reversal in the near term. Okay, thank you for joining me. Kathy Lean there from BK Asset Management on the dollar CAD, dollar yen and euro dollar. That's all from Targets in Focus for now. The program will be back on Monday with more currency action and of course a new guest. But for now, enjoy your weekend. Goodbye.